Alrighty, hey guys, it's Arbiter Chief Adam here. Got a special video today. So, looked at my channel three days ago to find out that I have finally reached 500 subscribers, which is kind of cool for me. Didn't really ever think I was going to get anywhere near 500. I was cool with five when I first caught them. But anyway, uh, with 500 subscriber, I'm going to be doing uh, the video today, and then I have another video, as promised, with the APX 8000. That will be a much quicker video than my normal video explanations. So today, like I said, go this is also going to be this is going to be my 500 subscriber video, and then this is also going to be the first in the line of my telecom videos. So in front of me, we have just a normal light bulb. However, we're not interested in light bulbs like that. We are interested in much bigger light bulbs. We're gonna be having some fun tonight. This here is a tower light beacon. Really, really cool piece of technology. This is one of the newer, older ones. Not as old as the incandescents, but it's newer than them. Um, now they do LED lights, which this is like a hybrid. We have the top and the bottom. You'll notice they're different. The bottom is LEDs. The top is a flash bulb, and we'll go over that in depth. We have individual LEDs on these boards. These are uh, soldered boards that are pre-made. Then they are added and screwed into the light. And let's see if we can see an LED in there. There it is, right there. So right there is our LED. These are red LEDs and they blink pretty bright. Uh, what we are seeing here is a light diffuser or not light diffuser, but it makes it, this keeps the beam reflecting out in a perfect circular pattern. Uh, the reason they do that is because when you are uh, lighting a tower to warn aviation, uh, you, you do not want to just have an LED facing here and then here because LEDs by themselves are directional. So for instance, this beam would be coming out towards the camera here. This beam would be coming this way. So you let, there's a gap here uh, where you would need to fill and instead of putting more LEDs, they just put these diffusers in. And I don't think they're called diffusers, but I'm gonna call them that. That's what they do. So they're basically just widening that light beam to cover this entire angle uh, where there is no LED. Anyway. So we have our red LEDs, then we have our flash bulb. The flash bulb is what you see during the daytime. If you look up on towers, you'll notice they're blinking, uh, blinking white, and the older ones are flash tubes instead of LEDs. Now everything is switching over to LEDs. Like I said, this is kind of a hybrid. So this is our flash tube. Pretty simple. Really not too much going on here as far as electrical circuits. So the flash tube in here is really no different from what you have in normal uh, cameras that take flashes when you take a picture. And once again, we are directing that beam 360 degrees. So the tube is orientated in a 360 degree pattern. We have our anode and cathode, and I think this rod over here is just acting as a holder. Uh, this in itself, this glass sphere around it, is just glass. Underneath we have a porcelain base because of the high voltages going through. This is a flyback transformer, and I'm not too sure about the voltage on that, but it is pretty uh, pretty significant that white wire here is actually a 40,000 volt DC rated wire So it, it's designed to handle some pretty significant voltage the basis of how it works is This flyback transformer provides 40,000 volts The 40,000 volts. Let's just say it pr produces 40,000 volts. It probably doesn't but you know, it's rated for 40,000, so why not? The high voltage goes through the tubes and creates a small little flash. The flash is very minimal. 
the flash is usually a little bit brighter than just a normal static discharge you would have between carpet and your finger. So if it's so small, why is it being used as a beacon light? The uh, high voltage spark is to actually start a, a line of capacitors to discharge inside this tube. And the voltage coming from the capacitors to the flash tube is around 500 volts DC. And there are, I believe, eight capacitors in line to provide power to this flash tube. So the arc starts by the flyback transformer over here. Once the arc is started, a relay will kick off in the box, which we'll look at, and all of the power is discharged in the tube, and the result is a really, really bright flash. This is extremely bright on the ground. Uh, I actually have to have welding, a welding hood on just to keep myself from going super blind. So uh, super, super bright, and it's not something I would recommend anyone to mess around with unless they know what they're doing. On top of that, these are also very, very dangerous. Uh, don't go looking at flash systems and then sticking your fingers in all of the things like I just did. I know this one's dead because it's been dead for about two weeks, but if this thing's up on a tower and you shut down the systems for maintenance, or even if you're just messing around with it like me at the house, which I don't recommend, um, the capacitors, if they don't have their bleeder resistors on them working correctly, can hold a large amount of power for a very long time. It's just wise not to go around messing around with this stuff unless you know what you're doing, you've been doing it for a while. So that is basically that. So like I said, we have our flash unit here. And then inside is our LED controller. So you can kind of see it in there. Basically it's just an LED driver board. Converts the voltage from the box sending it to the light to LED capable voltages for this board to basically just make the angry, angry pixies fly through the LEDs. So. I'm not gonna go into the depths of how the LEDs work. I think y'all figured that one out. But, uh, so that's the LED driver. Let's go over real quick the, the actual box that makes all, everything happen in the light. Okay, so here's just the outer box. Pretty significant box. Pretty big, pretty heavy. It's got a lot of good guts in it. Dimensions are Oh, just about 17 and a half by 19 and a half with about oh nine inches tall pretty heavy too probably weighs about 30 pounds somewhere in there and it is a uh, fiberglass box which I just got fiberglass all over me trying to pick it up so let's open her up We have a lot of stuff going on here. I'm gonna try to break it down to the best of my ability. Um, this is our, well, let me, let me take a step back here and just say, um, once again, this is a very, very, this can be a very hazardous and dangerous thing if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, just to give you an example of how dangerous it is, they actually have a toggle switch here that uh, basically when the door is open the switch pops out like it is right now and it turns itself off and disconnects the uh, live line to it so you can't stick your hands in there and shock yourself because with this kind of voltage especially with these capacitors and it looks like they're wired up in parallel so I was wrong um, but with these kind of capacitors you do not want to go sticking your hands in here when they are charged or after they're charged. Uh, there is enough voltage in there and power in there to kill you before you hit the floor. So you will be gone. Anyway, uh, so it looks, you know, like a lot of different things and it's, it's quite a bit, but it's not terrible. First thing we can eliminate is all these little relays here. These relays are not to actually drive the light. These are only to send alarms and trigger alarms to a remote monitoring service similar to a house with an alarm system. 
So you have, like I said, you've got different relays, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine relays, and all of them just do alarming. They do not actually provide a service to the light and they do not affect its operation. So we can just write this off the board right now because it doesn't apply to us. Um, but I know what everybody's eyeing in here is this capacitor bank and it is pretty extreme. So we have some big, these, each capacitor is 40 uh, microfarad. And let's see, what's their voltage that they're, and they're rated for 1,100 volts DC. So 1.1 kilowatt, or kilovolt, I'm sorry. 1.1 kilovolt. Pretty crazy voltage at 40 microfarad. You stick your hand in there and you discharge those on your hand, you will be gone. <laughs> Uh, you will notice here that they do have some resistors and it looks like this resistor is going to, yeah, this is a bleeder resistor. This will bleed the capacitors over time to prevent people from getting shocked. There's two bleeder capacitors. We have this one and then over here on the bottom left, we have this one right here. And these both discharge the capacitors when they are not in use. So then we have our transformer that will transform 120 volts AC up to looks like 100 1100 volts uh, DC but that goes through a whole rectification process and and all that stuff so that's pretty much how it works like I said the capacitor is built to charge then there is a relay right here there's this little black relay under here this is actually a solid state relay where is it? There it is. This is this relay controls the LED flashes, and this relay over here controls the arc, uh, the strobe. So, and we will we won't be able to hear it or see it because, like I said, they're solid state, so you won't be able to hear clicking noises. But that's basically just a general description of everything. Over here, we have our day night auto switch. Currently, it's set up for night. Uh, now it's set up for daytime and then this would be auto. Auto means that the switch is basically throwing itself out of line and it is sending the line over to the uh, photo cell. That's pretty much just a general description as far as wiring goes. Uh, I, I've got it pretty simple right now. I actually went over to Home Depot and I rewired it just to make it quick connectable. And I got some of these big four, um, four hole, 240 volt rated. I think these are rated for 30 amps. And this is currently what I have uh, controlling the light. So these are the cords. And I have them blue with blue, red with red. They just plug in and lock like that. And that's it. And then it's ready to go. So, so that's pretty much everything as far as how it works and just general operation. That's the boring stuff out of the way. Let's go ahead and get started with the fun stuff. And let's turn this sucker on. Okay, so we have the beacon ready to go. Got it wired into the box over there. And we're gonna light it up. Okay, I'm gonna have the lights on for the first one. The second one, the lights will be off. First one is gonna be nighttime mode, so we're gonna be setting uh, LEDs. And three, two, one. Three, two, one.
Alrighty, so that was, uh, wow. <laughs> that was actually really cool. Uh, you can see it on the drone. I did different angles on the camera, and that was pretty remarkable that it had to be, uh, camera had to be super far away to see that, which makes sense, because when we see this with the, with the naked eye, you know, we're 500 feet at least away from it. Uh, towers are tall and these lights are used for aviation warning markers basically. Uh, the red goes on at night and the flash that we saw goes on during the day so you normally don't see the flashes at night. Uh, there are certain circumstances where white would be more of an ideal use uh, during the nighttime. I've seen uh, several um, FAA warning lights programmed to white flash at night if there is fog in the area. That's a new function I'm not really familiar with, but that's pretty neat. And once again, this is an old tech that's getting phased out. It's still used and they still make these, but they're not being used as much. And uh, now everything is LED, so what they would do is uh, basically they take this whole top part off and all we have is LEDs here that are white and red. So, um, you know, it's pretty simple nowadays. The fun aspect's not really much, not really there anymore. The LEDs aren't as bright as the flashes, but they are a lot cheaper to run. The power consumption's a lot less, so that's progress. But uh, that was fun. Hope you all enjoyed the video. Uh, if there's any more questions, throw them in the comments. I'll be in there watching. So we'll see y'all later, next time. This is Arbiter Jeeve Adam out.